it's Emily here. Today, I am actually very, very, very excited to film this video. Um, if you couldn't tell, autumn is one of my absolute favorite seasons. Periwinkle, my mascot here, doesn't really suit the autumn vibe, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to do a Halloween custom Littlest Pet Shop. I haven't really been this excited to film a video in a little while. We are going to be transforming this LPS spider into a little zombie creature. I've been sitting on this for quite some time. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do for this Halloween inspired custom, though I was very excited to dive into it. Maybe I could do a pet that looks like a candy apple with a worm coming out of it, or what if I went and made an anglerfish, hyper-realistic, but nothing felt super exciting to me as much as this idea in particular. Uh, so let's sketch out the idea. I got this LPS pretty recently locally. Uh, somebody was selling an entire lot of them that they didn't want from their childhood, and I was really, really excited to get her, but I noticed after showing her in my haul video that she was missing a leg, and that made me so sad, so I decided to get creative and come up with a way to potentially use her in a custom that would elevate the pre-existing design. So by turning her into a little zombie spider, I'd be able to utilize that missing leg and give her a stubby little bone sticking out. I wanted to remove her bow on top of her head. I just felt like it didn't really go with the design. And in place of that, a little brain <laughs> on top of her head. And now for today's sponsor, Skillshare. If you're interested in learning how to paint on canvas or paint miniatures like me, Skillshare might be a great option for you. I've been using Skillshare to work on my graphic design lately, but they have classes for a lot of different things like filmmaking, animation, design, and more. Skillshare is the leading online platform for creatives and has a whole lot to offer. There are thousands of classes taught by professionals. Whether you're looking to elevate your hobby, develop a new skill, or even start studying for a new career, Skillshare has the resources to help you grow. Skillshare also offers learning paths, which are more structured courses to help master a specific skill that you're looking to learn. If you're looking to learn more about painting or miniatures, there's even a class by Jessica Esper on how to paint your own custom art toys. Let's both learn a new skill this back to school fall season. The first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial. Click the link in my bio if you're interested in learning with Skillshare. And thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. We have to start by doing surgery on a grape. <laughs> I'm going to start by cutting off her little bow. This shouldn't hurt because it's literally hair and a bow, um, but it will leave a whole litter skull. A sort of thousand degree knife challenge. Actually, the plastic is quite soft. It's one thing about the older ones and the g7 actually is a uh, plastic tends to be a lot softer than some of the later generations i find also please be careful if you're uh, a younger customizer i'm an adult so i'm allowed to be irresponsible with an exacto knife oh oh my gosh she's actually so cute maybe maybe i will flatten this a little bit <clears throat> Now it really looks like I'm doing surgery on a grape. Now it is time for face removal surgery. Um, I will be using 100% acetone to take off her face bits. She's under anesthetic. Shh, 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 shh. She's looking pretty baldies basics to me. Her uncultured baby form. I'm gonna actually rinse her in the sink because I don't like the thought of acetone kind of sitting on her plastic under paint. It does look like she has a animal bite, kid bite, something on her leg, but I don't really see that as too much of an issue because uh, she is a zombie. I'm going to have the exposed bone popping out from where her leg is supposed to be. The bone in her leg is going to need some reinforcements just because I don't trust it to just stick on there. So I'm actually going to be using one of my little eye hook wires. So I'm going to kind of see how long I want this bone to be sticking out of her. I'm thinking like maybe that much. I think I'm gonna cut a little tiny indent because her body is solid, it is not hollow. Heat her up and then stick it right into the plastic. 
So she has her little eye hook in. Another cool idea would actually be to attach another eye hook and then make two separate bones. So she'd have like a little dangly bit. Looks like we're gonna be doing some sculpting with the green stuff, whether I like it or not. I hate this play. I hate it, I hate it. I think I just need to like wrap it wrap around. I need to wrap it around the wire and then start to sculpt there by kind of pushing it in there. And wrapping it around, blending it a little bit at the base. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting somewhere. This is what I've done so far for her little exposed bone. I know it looks bigger than what the bone would actually look like inside of her leg, but I do really like the idea of it being kind of over-exaggerated. I am going to try to kind of work on a little brain. I'm just gonna play around, I think. It's kind of hard because I'm inspired by having a little brain sticking out, but also the idea of little worms coming out of her is really gross but cool. Okay, this is kind of looking like she has a hairdo, and I don't like it. Let's try this a different way. <laughs> Ta-da! And now I'm going to draw on the little brain lines. Little brain beret. I don't like it. I genuinely thought the bone was gonna be the most frustrating part, but I am definitely not having fun with this brain thing. So I've been fiddling around with the brain. I ended up uh, adding a little tufty on the side of her head just cause I like the fluffy look. I added a little bit to her foot. I am going to take a creative liberty and I'm going to cut a bigger hole in her head so that I can sit the brain on the neck peg and then you can look in and see the brain inside of her head. But I'm going to try because you won't know if it looks cool until you try it. And the result of the head hole cutting and then when you look at her kind of from here, you can see it peeking out just a tad. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a dry brush method. I did just realize with how deep her brain is, I think it'll be a lot easier if I paint her brain first. That way I can kind of get pink everywhere and then clean it up with the green that I'll be doing afterwards. So I am going to mix in a little bit of water in with my paint and start doing a couple coats on her little brainy. I'm not too worried about this kind of getting messy um, because I will just be able to paint over everything. That's looking pretty brainy to me. Not a bad first coat for the brain. I'm thinking of maybe adding dusting of pastel on it at the end just to give it a little bit more depth. Okay, now that we have a drying brain, I've kind of made this slightly minty zombie color for her. Ooh, so minty, so minty. Uh, make sure that this coat is pretty light. Um, it doesn't need to cover everything. You don't want to layer things on too, too thick initially. I think I'm gonna switch the white eye to this side um, just so that we're kind of keeping a bit of a contrast. I do like the little bags I have for under her eyes that I'm thinking about doing. I might wanna do that with a little bit of pastels. I'm just gonna scrape a tiny bit. Blend it out with a tiny bit of water. Guys, 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 <clears throat> mm. would, would, would it be bad if I switched the background to be more autumn-y? Cause I feel like I put this down and then I was like, oh, this looks cute, but it doesn't go with the vibe. So what if I...
Okay, it's eyeball time. And I'm not looking forward to eyeball time. I never do. If you're not familiar with LPS Customs, eyeball time is when, um, this is, okay, this is a term I actually made up by myself. It's when you have to do the eyelashes, which are very small and very detailed. It's hard enough already, but trying to lend yourself to doing it in front of a camera makes the entire process extremely difficult, needless to say. If you do the eyelashes before anything else and then the whites, you can kind of cover up any issues. I mixed a dark brown with a little bit of blue and I mixed in a tad bit of black. So it will look black, but it won't 100% be black. It makes it look a little bit nicer if it has a bit more depth to it, so. Maybe a little bigger. <laughs> It'd be kind of cool if the, the eye was also shaped like that. Yeah, I think I like that a lot. I've made a, a dark green color to work on her stitching around her eyes. This is going to maybe even be needing a steadier hand than what I needed to do for her eyes. I'm not even sure if I'll be able to do this one on camera. Oh, <laughs> oh Grace. Oh, I'm not, I'm not breathing. I, I have to do this off camera, I'm not breathing. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the little insidey bit. Okay, now I am going to use the um, dark green color and go ahead and add in all of her little stitches. Yep, she is a little grape. I usually sell my customs, by usually I mean the last one that I made, I sold. And the thought of getting rid of her makes me a little bit sad because she's just so cute. Hello, right now we are going to make some brain goop. I'm going to get a little bit of this rose pastel. This is my first time trying anything like this. I don't have resin. I'm going to use this top coat gel nail polish. And now I'm going to mix the pigment into it. Okay, I'm not sure if I like the color of this brain goop in particular, so I am going to try adding a little bit of the same pink color of paint. All right, so I've made a more preferable goop color for the brain, um, and I'm just going to get her and kind of mess around with it and see what I like, and then maybe cure it. I think I'm gonna start with that actual, like that darker one, and put it inside the crevices. Um, just to add a little bit more shading. Yuck! Okay, I'm gonna cure that. I like that. She's cured from her ailments. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. First layer of goop done. I'm going to go in with the lighter layer of goop. Oh, ew! It's so perfect. Ugh, gross. Mmm, good. I, I even see, oh, is there a hair in there? Mm. Look at this goopy brain. I decided to add a little bit of extra goop around the edges. <laughs> I am so happy <laughs> with how it turned out. It's so gross, I love it. Now I'm going to add her little blushies um, because I am a fan of blush. And then after that, usually what I like to do when I think I'm done with a custom is take a picture of it, throw it on my iPad, and then add a bunch of little extra details and see how I like it so that I don't accidentally ruin something. Oh, I think the like tiny, tiny little blushies with her, so cute. And now I'm going to go in with a very light, like a green pastel and just define her knee areas, I think a little bit. A little extra 
on her joints. Hello! I added the finishing details, I glossed her eyes and her body. Introducing our zombie, um, spider. <laughs> I do believe that I will be putting her up on my website to be sold, so if you're interested in baby zombie spider, uh, keep your eye out and I will let you know on my Instagram when she goes up for sale. Thank you very much for watching, um, I really have been enjoying doing customization videos. Any support by watching these kinds of videos is very very helpful. Thank you for watching, bye!